Hey, amazing atheist. This is the practitioner, bachelor of science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, Fortean skeptic, and technical agnostic. Um, uh, I'd call myself an agnostic for one simple reason as opposed to being an atheist. Um, God, to me, is an untestable claim. Like string theory, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, the anthropic principle, and practically every other half dozen um, pieces of junk that have been brought up, well, I wouldn't know if they're still junk, they're just in the untestable range right now, um, of, th of theories that have been invoked to, uh, to, to explain such things as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and the uh, uh, pertaining to the double slit experiment, uh, why you can only uh, get interference patterns if you don't try to figure out which uh, slit the electron or photon went through. Uh, or, or explaining reasons as to why um, the uh, as to why quantum mechanics intersects with relativity. I mean, I even once in a frickin' bookstore saw a book which actually said the mathematical proof for the existence of God, and I'm going, you know what? It's been equivocated with a whole bunch of, uh, you know, uh, you know. You get my point. I'm, I'm a science student myself. Um, I'm, I'm an, I'm an, I am a believer in what I can see and what I can, you know, and what I can look at in terms of anomalies, evidence, what have you. If I see something that looks like it's got some statistical anomaly to it, I, I automatically seize on it as being worthy of research. I don't necessarily agree with the conclusions of it, but I still think it's worthy of research. And uh, I get pissed um, uh, at, uh, and you're right, I get pissed at a fucking society that um, literally doesn't do anything. But um, I hate to disagree. With, uh, I am going to have to disagree with you on a major point. I think the bulk of society is actually happy with the way things are right now. If we weren't, we wouldn't be. Uh, you know, if we weren't, we'd be. Uh, we'd be innovated by now. I'll give you a pivotal example. We could have been. Uh, you know, if people were. Uh, if people were really. Uh, you know, were really uh, dissatisfied and wanting to solve a, a large chunk of the social uh, ills and world's problems, we could have gone and colonized the asteroid belt by now. Uh, well, actually, no, we could have had the first colony up in geostationary orbit with our first colony on the asteroid belt in about 10 years, shipping resources back and shipping enough power back from geostationary orbit to give our standard of living to the entire fucking planet without any environmental degradation. We have the technology and we could have had it done by now. But no, fucking, uh, fucking uh, um, people who were uh, in, the, in the Senate and the Congress at the time didn't want to fund the money because they liked the way things were then, and they were afraid about losing their election next time. Here's another example. They wanted to, uh, they had, there were two designs up for the space shuttle back during the late 1970s when it was first approved. The design we have now, and the design, and another design that would have cost more up front, but was safer, and would have lowered the operating cost overall. But they were afraid about. They were afraid of spending money on some, you know, on new technology. They were afraid of spending money and doing it right. So they be, uh, based it on something cheap that they could vaguely understand within their comfort zone. And and uh, lo and behold, they uh, and lo and behold, they uh, they gave it up. Um, and lo and behold, look at where we fucked up now. I mean, the thing is, I think you know what I will. I will tell you this. You're right. The bulk of people who've ever actually brought forward anything were dissatisfied with the with the system that they were living in. They were perplexed by anomalies and stuff like that growing up, uh, you know, in their environment. And they were curious about the rest of the world out there, or they, or they found ways of reapplying what they already knew into newer areas. But no, the bulk, but I hate to break it to you, the bulk of society seems to be comfortable with where we're at. Even as you pointed out, people don't want to live to tomorrow. They're afraid of living outside their comfort zone. Um, I mean, why else would they be perpetuating mortgages day in, day out, trying to think long term towards these, you know, towards these narrow, hyper fucking viewpoints? Sorry, um, I, I've never actually degenerated into this. Um, I'm, I normally try to uh, maintain myself to being a critical thinker. You're right. Nobody is rational. Um, but as an Aspie, um, uh, having Asperger's syndrome, um, my brain is wired uh, to. Um, my brain is wired to like rationality more than irrationality in 90% of those cases. I guess you could say I'm one of those cretins who, uh, in one in your video, uh, Christians are atheists too. Um, uh, you know, in your video, Christians are atheists too. Proposed uh, should have been uh, uh, hit in the face with a baseball bat. 
um, and saying that, um, and you were saying that if it, w it would actually be illogical for them to maintain that hyper rationality for being uh, fear of being hit in the face by a baseball bat. I'm going to correct you on that point. That's what's called the appeal to force fallacy, um, which meant that anybody who had actually done that, uh, no, it would not have been irrational for them to do so. It would have been irrational for the person hitting them in the face of the baseball bat to try to do it to force their to force their opinion down their people's throats, like Jesus freak, um, uh, for an example. But I digress. Um, I wanted to also mention something about uh, you're talking about lemons being the proof in the infomercials in relation to making fun of psychics. Yes, um, that's actually a good point. Um, I'll also tell you a little something else. This whole comfort zone in terms of, you know, comfort of what people are actually, uh, of what, um, comfort with what people actually know. Did you know that in terms of actual scientists who are trying to skeptically evaluate, yes, uh, I'm a skeptic too, and I've actually been taking a look at the actual skeptic work. There are less than some um, point. There, there's some less than point some, than point three percent of all academics worldwide who are looking scientifically into the whole issues of uh, psychic phenomena and the like. And uh, that includes in the skeptical movement. Like you know, it's only a fraction of a percent who are actually seriously trying to take a look at research into this. Richard Wiseman and Ray Hyman are only a couple. Uh, you know, are, are a couple of uh, the prominent names in this. Um, James Randi's challenge. Um, you know, I, we seem to be comfortable in our own viewpoints, even after we've, uh, you know, had numerous experiences uh, over the years to confirm our, uh, our viewpoints, rational or not. I mean, um, whenever we get new evidence that contradicts our viewpoints, um, if we've had enough, uh, you know, I, I'm going to say this. You're right. We are irrational. And even the best of us critical thinkers, um, if we get reinforced with enough evidence over time, we're going to start, uh, you know, falling to misinterpretations ourselves and start having these lapses. Uh, one prominent example of this, the uh, $1 million challenge should actually have been given out a long time ago and not on for anything paranormal. Um, well, not strictly. Um, go look up Arthur C. Clarke, comma, dowsing. Look up his documentary from Discovery Channel on World of Strange Powers. James Randi, back during the 1980s, conducted a test on dowsing for metal and dowsing for water. Thing is, if uh, and, and thing is, according to Arthur C. Clarke, another fellow mega skeptic, those tests should have been run as separately for independent for independent uh, phenomena of attempting to douse for. The dowsing for water was statistically significant. The dowsing for metal, zilch. Um, to you know, uh, for Randy to lump together the two would have been like saying like, oh, um, penicillin it doesn't work, but uh, penicillin is uh, is wrong because it can't cure AIDS. So if I claimed that it cured AIDS, then all of a sudden, then, uh, then if that claim was wrong, then it's a claim that it could cure any disease is therefore wrong. You know, therefore penicillin doesn't work for anything because it can't cure AIDS even though I claimed it to. So if it's wrong for one claim, it's wrong for all. That's uh, called an appeal to, that's called an appeal to, um, an appeal to, uh, oh. Sorry, that's called the hasty generalization fallacy. It's basically taking like one data point and expanding it for a whole bunch of stuff. Randy did that with the dowsing. Uh, he and some skeptics are still doing this in relation to acupuncture, where there is some peer-reviewed evidence. And, my, and uh, mega skeptic Michael Shermer, a close uh, uh, a close um, uh, colleague of uh, of uh, James Randi's, has actually said that in terms of pain relief, there is some evidence for acupuncture, but not for a lot of the other claims that it's come up with. And the problem is, is that in terms of our comfort zones, we are so comfortable in our own viewpoints, even as skeptics. Marcelo Truzzi pointed this out that we we can get so um, you know stuck in our own viewpoints as to what counts for skepticism that we don't actually even take a look at our own arguments just to see what the actual causes for stuff might be. Now, this is not saying that I automatically support paranormal, but I'm saying if we're going to look at uh, rational explanations for um, supported uh, purportedly paranormal phenomena or psychic phenomena or other stuff like that, let's make sure we've got the right nat rational explanation shall we i mean you know if we got a wrong rational explanation in some aspect of psychology that could start influencing our viewpoints on other aspects of psychology that are normal and cause erroneous conclusions in other areas this stuff this stuff does overlap you know between disciplines or between other su uh, subsets of disciplines you know, we aren't in inter we aren't in a in a single isolated uh, subject from each other. Physics influences chemistry, influences biology, influences psychology, um, and at certain levels should theoretically influence parapsychology. I'm a skeptic of psychic phenomena. I believe it the bulk of it to be psychological, but we should be aware of what types of um, you know of what psychological phenomena are influencing what types of supposedly paranormal phenomena. Uh, you know, or what is more likely the cases. Or in cases where normal uh, phenomena can't explain it, that there may be a combination of some factors that we're overlooking. 
Richard Wiseman, I um, uh, Richard Wiseman, a uh, a skeptic in Britain, uh, a skeptic psychologist in Britain, is prominently looking into a large chunk of this stuff right now. So you know, it pays to actually look at the frontiers and not just get comfortable in our into our ways of thoughts. Anyway, keep up the good work as a video. Toodles.